Awesome. Um, right, let me focus on Photoshop. There we are. That's how I like get my little face out of here. It's cold today. It's the first time I ever wore like a heavy shirt with one of these on. Um, anyways, so you do portraits, huh? I do portraits. Um, I also love to do, and I'd like to work with you. I love to do flower fish paintings against the ocean, a still life, but having ocean clouds jetty in it. Um, I live along the Jersey Shore. And so I'm inspired by the lifestyles of the Jer Jersey Shore and the colors and so forth. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. I, I think it's kind of funny you say color. Um, I, I remember when I was uh, living in Puerto Rico um, uh, after college, we went down for a week's vacation and we were supposed to head back to the plane and my buddy and I were just like, forget that. <laughs> we just like stayed for like three years. And, oh, wow. and it was just so much color everywhere. And then uh, one of my buddies out of New York had a boat show up, at, uh, up in um, uh, Jersey City, I think it is. Is it Jersey City? Right there at the top, right before you, like right across the river from New yeah. York. And so there was a big boat show. We, fl we, went, we flew back up there and went there. And I just looked around and I just saw everybody dressed in black, gray, and brown. The water was gray that's the, the every buildings are gray it was like whoa <laughs> i i know i know it's very um it's very dramatic change um i've been to st croix mm -hmm. and sometimes i find it actually too bright between the sky the water and the green yes and i miss the balance of the grays that i get along the shore mm. of the jersey shore but i do not like and i get very depressed with those city colors mm -hmm. so i i'm kind of like um limited to where i can go because of color <laughs> yeah either it is there's, there's not enough or it's oversaturated you know it's just, yeah <clears throat> Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, <clears throat> hold on a second. Make sure my mic came back on. Um, so my first thing, uh, we're going to look at the work, uh, the sketch, okay? Um, mm -hmm. And we're going to look at the photos. I like the little dog. Because <laughs> uh, there's something... I want, I want to just walk you through a couple questions in terms of the resources, okay? Sure. Um, because I want you to, to, to articulate um, each child because there, you can really, at least for me, I can clearly see a personality in all four of them, and it travels through in both images, right? Right. So not right. just in the, the color, you know, that's kind of funny that they, you know, they each have their own little color, you know. Um, right. But there's something about their personality in each of them. And, and something we really, really focus on, and you probably were picking up on this in these, in these um, videos you were watching, is that at the Academy, we, we really focus on trying to capture the essence or the energy or the verb of the person or the, or the subject. And then right. we start building around that, the nouns, right? Um, and so let's say as a portrait artist, you know, we're not really concerned in the beginning with painting uh, noses and teeth and eyeballs, right? right? We want to figure out how do we really capture the energy, the essence of that person or yes. um, of who that person wants to be, you know? So it right. may not just be a capturing who they are right now, but who, who, let's say you deal with a businessman, right? And they're projecting, okay, in five, 10 years, I want my business to be here. For that to occur, I personally need to be like in this type of mindset, right? Um, right. So how can I have a portrait that helps broadcast or radiate to me the, 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 the energy, the nature, the character of that version of myself? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, it does. And so the, the, we like to call the art, not, not art, but we make our artifacts. So there's like a function to the work. Uh, mm -hmm. 
and a soul function, right? So that it, it betters the life. Because it's funny, I, I see some of these videos where these um, you know, guys are like showing their houses, you know, they're like, yeah, man, I made all this money, check out my house, right? And they have these beautiful things, beautiful cars and all this stuff. And then you see the artwork on their walls and I'm like, oh my God, like the artwork is horrendous. And yeah. it contradicts everything that they're preaching, right? Yeah. And uh, because there's no order, there's lack of harmony, there's no, you know, there's just, it's just, it's just, it's chaos. And, uh, right. <clears throat> hold on one second. And so, um, so where we want to start is with what we call story. And in the story, you know, okay, what is the story that you, the narrative that you want to sh- tell, but also what is it that you want it to broadcast? What is that energy? You know, mm-hmm. and in this case, there's a couple energies, right? Ultimately, there's about six or seven energies that you got to figure out. You got the four kids and the dog; they each have their own energy, right? Mm-hmm. Then there yeah. needs to be an energy that um, connects them all, right? Mm-hmm. So, I always like to put it like each one has their first name, but they all have the same last name, right? So, yeah. what's the energy of the family unit, and then what are the energies of the individuals? And then, from reading your email, um, the environment in which you're in, the, the, the setting, is important as well. So it needs to have a certain energy to it as well, right? Yeah. So that's what I'd like to kind of just focus with you um, right now on, is just kind of walking through that process and, and determining that. Um, and then, and then, ta- and then letting you take that and then finish the way that you normally would do your pro- your process. Yes. Okay. So, um, right off the bat, like just looking at your sketch here, I'm going to share with you, um, what, what I'm seeing real quick. And, and sure. I see this diagonal coming through here this coming up right. through here and it's bringing this focal point onto him on the, onto the boy. Yeah. Right? So what that tells me is the most important child in this family is this kid. He's the leader uh-huh. of the group and it's not necessarily what he's doing. It's him himself. And okay. for me, if I was a father, that would probably turn me off. You know okay. what I mean? Because it's one thing if you're pointing to what they're doing and now all the kids and the dog can even be looking down at it. The, the daughter's like, right. yeah, you know, I'm, I'm seeing what you boys are doing playing in the mud, but you know, <laughs> um, you maybe right. have her just standing there. Like she's not really like, she's kind of there, but you know, I don't want to get dirty, you know? <laughs> um, right. And this way now it's about what they're doing as, as a family not focused on this one son. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. So what, to repeat what you just said, it, we want to shift a little more to what they're doing as opposed to being locked in my mind, locked into that tight sketch. That is like a knot of the sun. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Everything comes to him. And yeah. And it's, it's knotted. It's knotted there. The energy in my mind the energy kind of like, it's almost like a, it's almost, you know, it's, it's, it's too um, static at that point. Uh, uh, Does that yeah. make sense to you? That, Absolutely. It's like a knot. Yep. Yep. So what we can do, okay. a very simple solution then is um, let's get rid of this line. Okay. Okay. We're going to get rid of this here. You can already see how it's freeing up the eye. The eye's not being directed. Totally. Right? Actually, totally. now this is really nice, this beautiful space that's coming down in here. But if, yeah. if we want to go back and put in um, a line here, let's just get a I – don't, I don't want to get a black. Uh, okay. That's, mm, come on. Okay. So now what we can do is rather than putting this line here, maybe just shifting mm-hmm. it down to there. Boom, right? Okay. And this one could probably even just go across horizontally. And now, right. just those two little line shifts, all of a sudden, we're looking at what the kids are doing together. 
Right. Not looking at that right. that boy, right? Yes. Oh, so yeah, that, much more comfortable. I'm sorry. Let me, uh, let me shut down my Facebook because when people send me a message, it gets really, really loud in my ears. Um, yes. So let me close that out. Okay. Um, yeah, so that, that's just the first thing. I mean, just that little tiny shift. And, and this is the reason why composition is so important because you really, you know, could have a really nice, beautiful image, which a lot of artists and a lot of people I work with are really good at. They're, they're really yeah. good at copying, copying photos, yeah. or something from life, um, drawing what's there, drawing what they see, maybe changing it up a little bit. But usually what they change are the nouns. They're not really conscious of the little nuances that make or break it so so yeah. for example have you ever seen a work of art and you're like wow that's really good and then you look at the signature and the signature is like huge and gaudy and just like what the heck right it just yeah it just breaks the piece right yeah yeah so so at the academy we actually teach you a way of composing your signature so it actually embeds into the artwork and it becomes part of the design oh i love that yeah. I've often thought about, I often wondered and was sensitive to when I write my name in about how it changes it. It's like glass mark and it is something that kind of, I don't know, it, it becomes a question in my mind. Mm -hmm. But go, move forward. We'll work on that another day. Well, I'll just take a second and give you that little gift right now. Okay. Okay. Unless you don't want the gift. No, I do. Okay. So, um, so if you just extend down. Uh, let's say let's say you want to put it in the bottom right hand corner of your signature, right? So what you could do is just extend down from maybe the dog's ear in the back of the boy, um, yeah. across maybe from this part of the shadow. And what you're doing is you're basically yeah. creating what we call a notional space, um, <clears throat> but it extends from parts of the image itself. So this way, now you have this little box that now you can put your signature in. And in doing that, no, let us, let's do it this way. Let's say, oops. you put your signature in, and now when you get rid of the lines, now your signature is actually part of that piece. Yes. You know, wow. so the top, yeah. the bottom, and the two sides of that space that your signature takes up, it actually connects strategically with inside the piece. Yes. And then if you even wanted to get further with it, you could actually extend it down here and shift that, you know, um, this could have actually been maybe even plopped there. Now it's even in line with that, that diagonal. Oh, wow. And I, I don't think I'd ever have the nerve to put it into the picture as much as you did, but it was, it was lovely. Cool. So that's, and that's I, yeah. And I'm, and I'm light with my touch with my signature. It's not, I'm not broadcasting my name. Exactly. I do, like, I do like to sign my yep. name. Yep. Yep. So, the, you know, that's just one way. And you, and you figure that out. See, people think of the signature all the way at the end, right? So it's, it becomes like a sticker almost that they put on top of the work. Mm, this way, right. you can pose that out before you ever mix any paint, you know? Right. So you're already planning the end all the way from the beginning. So uh, let's, let's focus on story. And, and um, so here are the, the, the kids. Obviously, you use this picture for the most part with, with her. Um, and, and, and just in your mind, what were you thinking in terms of, you know? Well, I, I think what I was thinking of, um, I, I took the pictures that, that the elements of the children that I thought made the most obvious sense in terms of composing. I wasn't crazy about this picture of the girl. Um, I prefer the other one and I kind of, decided to move her a little more to the left so that there would be a little space between the boys. And then I thought I might move the littlest guy maybe farther to the right. And I said, no, I kind of like the, um, if you go back to the sketch, um, there's a difference in separation between the girl and her brothers. There's that space. And then there's a little separation between the youngest boy and the oldest son. I think that's the oldest son. Just to show that he's independent, but he huddles close. He's the littlest one. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I was thinking of. I thought, okay, I, look, at, I am a novice at composition. It just said to, it just said to me, great, we'll overlap two, 
will separate a little more the largest character, the girl, the mm-hmm. oldest, and then we'll have the little boy a little separate, but have a little tension in his spacing with his brother. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's as far as, honestly, I didn't know what to think more than that. That's beautiful. But you're thinking about it, right? And you're planning it. I, and and that's, that's great because, you know, it gives you a rhythm. Uh, let me get a, a red color here. Okay. It gives you a rhythm of one, of one, uh, hold on a second. What's going on here? All right. Sometimes my stylus gets a little, gets a mind of its own. Okay, let's try this. Bing. All right, that doesn't want to work. We got plan two. Um, are you still seeing your image? I, I am. Okay. Yeah. So um, let's see if I can. So we have, okay, so that works. All right, kind of. Okay, so we have one. Um, Hold on one second, I'm having a little issue here. Okay, so let me try that now. So we have one, two, one, one. Okay. Is yeah. that, that's your rhythm right now. One, two, one, one. So what we could do, right. we could go one, two, two. So if you connected the dog and the little boy together, now that gives you a different rhythm. So the boy like packs the girl's independence. She's standing, you know, by herself. Um, you could even go one, three, one and bring the little dog over here. Right. 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 So there's little different rhythms that you can play, but you also want to make sure that you do it according to their personality, the best that you know. So, and I, yeah, just to let you know, I never met the kids, you know, and uh, that's, that's fine. There's still personality in the pictures. Um, oh, I beg to so, differ. Excuse me. I beg to differ. There's a lot of personality in these pictures. No, 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 I said there is personality. Oh, okay. Pictures. I thought you said there isn't. Uh, okay, okay. No, no, there is. There is. There is. Okay, cool, cool. So let, let's just have a quick conversation about each one of them, okay? Now, obviously, we don't know them. So all we can go off of is, quote-unquote, body language, which is really an expression of energy, right? An expression of thought. And I love body language because... Um, it's honest. Unless you're an actor and you're trained to lie. <laughs> um, right. You know, there's a saying uh, that um, 50% of what people say, the person listening is only going to believe about 50% of that, right? But, right. The, um, but the body language, when we see people's body language, we believe 100% of it. So, Absolutely. That's why it's absolutely important um, when, when you translate that concept visually, the energy of the piece is the body language. And, you know, does it look like them? Well, that's kind of the words that you use, right? So yes. no matter how great it is, it's, it's, it's someone says, oh, man, that, that looks like my grandfather or, or whatever, you know, whatever. But it doesn't have to feel like them. Yeah, it has to feel like the person. So yes. let's look at this little guy. We're going to flip back between the two images. In both images, um, the little one, guy in the first one, right, right here, is mm-hmm. more charming to me. Okay. What and, What do you think? Oh, I I think he's a superhero. I think he's a superstar in this image. Um, what about him in this image? Um, it's more posed. Yeah, I kind of almost feel feel that like like uh, I don't know what happened, but I feel like this was the natural thing, and then uh, and maybe the dad's like, uh, everybody get together and let me take a picture of you guys together, you know? I agree. I agree. And so uh, yeah, um, let me write some things down. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna say, uh, girl, uh, B one. B2, and I'm going to say green, red, and then B3, which will be blue, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, 
I'm not going to call her girl. We'll call her daughter. All right. Um, so with B3 Blue, <laughs> um, you said charming. Okay. Yes. I, yeah. I, I think he's more charming in the other picture. Okay. Now, what do you think? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think that's a great word. Uh, now, let's not look at the image in a negative way, like saying that he's posed in this one, because that's the reality. But, but let's try to pull out um, a characteristic from him, because even though he's posed, he's still him, right? So in this one, compared to the other three, obviously he stands out, right? So mm -hmm. what about him? Like, what kind of word would you subscribe to him? Um, thinker. I, I, I don't, uh, I mean, I just feel that he's observant and he's thinking, but I really can't, honestly, I really can't say I get that much. And I only have a couple of, two pictures to work from. I can't say I get as much, I look at, you're much <laughs> more intuitive than me. I thought exactly the same thing. Oh. And obviously, I consider myself slightly charming and a thinker and an observer. So that's right. probably why I relate to that little guy so much, right? Like in this image, he's looking from a distance. And what's nice yeah. is in this image is we really feel it because we have this diagonal coming down through here. Um, let me get my annotation tools. Um, let's see here. Uh, give me a second. This is okay. Technology is awesome when it works, and then when it doesn't, it's like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, okay, so here, let me, get a, let me get the arrow tool. Okay, so here we have this line, which allows us to travel from him to what the boys are going at. Okay. Yes, so smart. It, and it really isn't the, him. It's this line that allows us to start with him and then travel along. So it makes us feel like he's looking from a distance. He's observing. Yeah. He's not the participant. Right. Now, he himself is telling us that. Why? Because look at where his hands are. Yes. His eyes are over here. His, his body... His physical being is pushing behind himself where his eyes, his mind, is over here. He's teleported himself over here. Here, right. he's very vertical. I ain't going there, but I'm already there. And guess what? Right. He's there before they're there. Excuse me? He's there before they are there. Yes. Right? Because he, he, he just like, shoo, shoo, you know, like here's yeah, he the ghost version. He beamed you know? in. Exactly. He, beamed in. Yeah. exactly, he beamed in. So in an image like this, if we were doing a portrait of him, right? Right. Well, then we would take her skirt, put it on that angle. The boys right. would repeat, repeat this, right? That belt that's here, heck no. We want to turn that little bit like this oops, so that our eye, and then we, we run it into his belt and maybe we even bring up her shirt a little bit, the, the little vest thing. So it gives us an alignment, right? Right. And maybe we, we shift them down a little bit so that all of this, this line, instead of coming up on the boat, it maybe comes to the top of his head, right? Or if we do have it as the, as the boat, maybe, you know, we come up here and, and, and that's where that, that um, maybe the horizon line is mm -hmm. so that your eye comes here and then at this point it now connects through these guys and then comes all the way over here you know to where that that object might be or something so maybe they they have to shift their heads up just a little bit because they're walking towards this but again he's already there right so right you know this is why it's really important to kind of like just stay in the sketching stage for a little bit and kind of work out these little ideas. Um, right. Because now you can build a, an entire collection. I mean, you, when you plan something like this out, you know, you, you might be able to encourage uh, four paintings instead of one.
right? Where then you focus on each one. They're all family photos, uh, images, but you get to focus on um, the character and the story similar, but from each person's perspective, right? So that's just a thought. Um, Let me get back to uh, Photoshop here. Okay. Let me see if I can get a different tool here. Ah, great. Cool. Got it. Cool. So, all right. Um, so in this image, again, his hands are to his side where everybody is leaning forward. He's vertical, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and so what, if I was composing this piece, what I would actually do is not make him vertical because being vertical is a sign of like strength. So, so maybe you can make him mm-hmm. vertical a little bit, but I, I kind of like. What was that? What, Don, um, what was that? Because a, a vertical, vertical is a sign of it's strength. You know, if you're gonna, okay, it, it's it's confidence, it's strength, it's certainty. It, you know, it, right. it's immovable. Okay, something that's horizontal is at rest. It's at peace. Right. I like to say, <clears throat> if it's uh, active, it's if it's uh, if you know, there's sports or violence or war or something like that, you put that on, on a diagonal, right? So, for example, what I, what I like to say is um, if you're going to do an image of a king, okay? Let me see if I can. Hmm. Let me get my tools here. Oh, uh, maybe I gotta close this out. All right, I, I'm getting slightly frustrated with this now. <laughs> um, let me see here. Uh, something's happening here. Okay, there we are, finally. Okay, now. Let's say we have an image of a king. Ah, great, I can draw again, finally. Um, So let's say we have an image of a king, okay? We have all these verticals in his little crown, okay? Mm -hmm. We put a, a vertical beard on him, his mustache isn't out to the side. You know, it's down down for that nose, um, mm-hmm. maybe his eyes are even more vertical, okay, whatever. Um, he has little, lot. Of, you see I'm just really emphasizing the verticals to give this mm-hmm. regalness, the strength. Now, mm-hmm. question, if he is a king, a wartime king, and you were going to compose something in the background, would mm-hmm. you do it on a horizontal or would you do it on a vertical or would you do it on a diagonal? It would be a diagonal for exactly. action. Exactly. Flags or something like that, spears. Okay. So, and, and so it doesn't matter what it is. It could be uh, his castle. It could be a right. war. You know, um, imagine like oh, now he's on a horse, right? But right. it doesn't matter what it is. It's the energy that's being radiated from it. Yes. So let's say he is a peacetime king. Which thrust would you continuously use in his background? It Ho- would be horizontal. Exactly. Be the calm- calmness. Exactly. And so these could be, again, castles. They could be a scenery in the back. It could be whatever. It could be a feast. But it now broadcast a sense of calm, peace, rest. So same king, two different energies, two different stories. Right. Make sense? Um, Now, if he's surrounded by other verticals, now do you see how he contrasts this one? 
He is the strength that brings peace. He is the strength that brings victory, right? Right. Here, does he stand out from it or does he blend into it? He blends into it. Yeah. And so what kind of story? Am I wrong? You're absolutely right. See, this, the thing is, I ask these questions and people get all nervous because they think these trick questions, but it's so obvious. It's just things we've never really asked or been taught before. But it's like, right. you know, if I, if I stand in front of you and I make a face like an aggressive face and my fists are out there, you know, does that mean I want to hug you or, or punch you, right? You know? Right, right, right. It's obvious. But um, so in this case, does he blend into that energy? Or does he, uh, does he contradict, or, you know, does he juxtapose to it? <clears throat> yeah, he blends into the energy. Okay, so now if he is strong and regal and confident and the things around him are, now let's ask the question, what kind of stories could you build? So, for example, one could be him standing among his knights, right? True, true. It could be his children. Right. right. Uh, would you draw him like this among peasants? No, because then he would be um, equal to the peasants. Well, right? it's a yes or no question. It's, it's really depending on how you want to tell that story. Could he be a king of the people? Uh, yes, he could be a king of the people. And in his, in his regality, he brings and he edifies and lifts the people up into a place of confidence. Now you're talking about Trump. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and, and that's, and that's uh, ways we can compose images, you know, so you can tell all these kinds of stories. Um, let's say, just so that we don't anger people, let's say Washington, okay? Yeah. Um, that Washington came in as a man of confidence and things, but he also brought the 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 other people around him up like that right um yes. but this is exactly so you, so you're getting it and these are the kinds of areas that you want to play with before you get into eyeballs and noses and hair right because mm -hmm. um, they are the sublineal messages that either strengthen your composition and well not just composition your concept yep. or they confuse or they just like Absolutely. don't even, they don't even ring a bell Absolutely. And look, <clears throat> you're going to spend a lot of time working on an image, right? Yeah. Now, you bring it to the guy who commissions it, and he hangs it into his family room. Now, imagine over the next 10 years, how much time do you think him, let's just say, let's just say him, okay? How much time do you think he personally is going to sit there and actually eyeballs to paint Look at that artwork. Well, I'll tell you what. When it's a strong composition, it draws you a, a strong painting based upon construction and following through with all the other things. Mm -hmm. It will draw the person like a magnet. Even though they're not even sure why they're drawn to it, it will be a magnetic. I agree. So yeah. if, it's, if, it, if it's strong, it's, he's going to get his money's worth. And if it's... If it's uh, bad, uh, in the next generation, nobody's going to want the painting. And I, I, I agree. But now, let's say the composition's great. It, it draws them in. The painting's great. It draws them in. It, you, now you've, now you've uh, triggered attraction, right? Boom. Ooh, mm -hmm. I want to see that. So now he's looking at it. How much time, let's say in the first year, do you think he's actually going to be intentionally, consciously, without any distractions, focused on looking at that painting? Um, Ten hours? He's a busy man. Well, hold on now. He's a busy man, but when it's a good painting, I'll give it 15 minutes, 20 minutes a week. Okay. So let's say, let's just say uh, 10 times 50 weeks. As 500 minutes, okay? And we'll mm -hmm. double it to 1,000 minutes because he's going to take 20 minutes every week to look at this painting. Um, right. Which we already know, just logically, like, you know, come six months, he's gonna, it's going to be just part of the, the room, right? 
Um, but let's just say he does that for an entire year. That's a thousand minutes. Um, right. I don't know what a thousand minutes really is. That's about 10 hours, I guess, right? Maybe a hundred hours, right. uh, something like that. Um, well, 60, let's say a hundred, uh, let's just pretend it's a hundred minutes per, per hour, which isn't the case, but just to make the math easier. And we say a thousand. So, uh, yeah, so about 10 hours, you know, let's say even he spends 20 hours in an entire year looking at the painting. Um, right. that's a lot of time. I, I, I don't think people spend 20 hours in a lifetime looking at a painting. Um, but let me ask you this question. Mm-hmm. As long as that, if that painting is within his peripheral vision and he's mm-hmm. in the room in which the painting is in, he's not consciously looking at it. It's just mm-hmm. in his vision. How much of the time is that painting good or bad? Uh, is how much of the time is it affecting him if you were going to give a percentage of time even if it's uh, affecting him on a subconscious level you know it's yeah 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 um oh my god you mean like okay you were talking about in in a year in in a uh i mean look, listen maybe i'm different mm-hmm. but i hum i look at my i look at paintings i have every day Mm -hmm. okay i basically live in my home i look at work a lot of it is my own it's the work i like and um i look at it and i nod my head i say yes good so if you like the painting Mm -hmm. it will refresh your mind as much as the furniture and the color in the walls the architecture of the home you whatever it just defines your life so i I don't diminish the effect of art art means a lot to me so So that's the way i am i'm I'm going with that is where i'm going with this is this if we're selling the idea that the person is buying the painting and they're going to be looking at the painting right you need to put the time in beforehand to get those things right so that's worth his time well, more, yes, but the painting itself, just like you said about the architecture and, and the furniture, I think is really, really important because um, all of that stuff works and it creates an, an environment that we're, we exist in, right? And so if that stuff isn't uh, conducive to who we are and what, what we want and, and, and the message of our life, right, um, yes. then it, it's either going to contribute to our growth or contaminate it, right? And so when a, a work of art, if you just look at the, the, the nouns in it and, and, okay, it looks like the person, this or that. But the question is, is what is it broadcasting? Is it broadcasting something that is contributing to that environment that the person is trying to set up? right? And when it's broadcasting, it's broadcasting 24-7. Even if you don't like a piece, it's still broadcasting, right? It's still yes. sending out a vibe, a frequency, an energy, um, because uh, just, just for those who are listening that don't, um, don't get what I'm talking about, I'm going to put on, uh, here's one line, okay? I made one line on this blank page, right? So mm-hmm. right now it's blank. I put one line, right? Now, Mm -hmm. if I move that line somewhere else, that's a very different energy, right? Yes. Now, if I take and I put a little line here, that changes everything. Yes. Now we have a third space. That space becomes very, very active. I mean, that tiny space is more powerful than all of this blank space around here, right? So now if I want to, right now it's loud, but if I bring it here, now it goes quiet, right? right? So two marks in one blank area just gave us three or four different images, three or four different energies. So we have to be, as composers, think about this. We have to think about our story, but also all the marks in the spaces that are going on in an image and making sure that they, they work together um, to, in a symphony, in an orchestra, Right. Right. That they actually play beautiful music. Right. Right. Because if you're at an orchestra, uh, you know, and you're hearing this beautiful music and all of a sudden this trombone just. 
and it's kind of going off on its own thing and the percussion is, is out of beat, it's doing its own beat, then you get noise. And it doesn't right. matter what the intent of the music was, you never achieve the mu music because all you have is noise. And so right. a lot of artists, they have great intention in their work, but because they're not managing the string section and the horn section and the percussion section and making sure that they're all working together in harmony, to, in mm -hmm. support of the vision, then they just have all this chaos, you know? And then they look at it and they get frustrated and they're like, man, I don't know what, what it is about this image that's just off, you know? And, mm -hmm. uh, and so that's why we, we only focus on composition because once you get that, then you're free to enjoy the painting and the craft of actually executing the work because now you know from the beginning that everything's going to work together, you know, and deliver, yeah. deliver it. So, um, with, with, um, this, uh, image here with this little guy, um, let me see here. Um, I was, I just wanted to ask you, yes. do you like, well, do you like the idea of me not discarding the image of the little boy in that other picture, which we thought was charming, and putting him to the far left of the page, having the sister a little more towards the middle, and then as they're looking down, you have the two other boys, um, you know, towards the right, just kind of changing. I, I, I feel limited in the material. It's not as if I took a video of and I broke down and I got 200 different images. I'm working with this material to make a painting um, for this client. Yeah, so, but the client said this, I have, I'm, a, I, I, I'm a hobby photographer. I have a thousand trillion photos. So what you want to do is forget about the photos, compose the image, present the sketch to him, get an agreement on that, and then let him go find the photos that match that, that image. Right. Okay. Yeah. You know, so you're you are see. <clears throat> one of the mottos at the academy is stop copying, start composing. You are absolutely right. free. Uh, within some bounds, he gave you the boundaries. You know, you can't just uh, you know say here's an image of two kids. You know, <laughs> it, you right. gotta have four kids and the dog in there, right? So you have some constraints. Uh, but for the most part, if you can figure out the energy of each child and have it in there, you know, I mean, I look at this photo and I know he's very happy with this photo. That's why he sent it to you. But you can't right. know any facial features on these kids. Right. And yet they all have a personality, right? Right. Um, now, it's easy to say, well, you know, he's the blue shirt one and he's the green shirt. Outside of that, they each have their own energy. And just to save time, uh, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to just map out uh, some some energy for you here. Okay, we said that this guy, his his hands are coming back, right? So maybe we come a vertical here. You see, this is really important to have this energy popping out the back because it really yeah. shows like his face, boom, his shoulders, like that's really, really important um, yes. to have that like that. Now, in, in this case also, we also want to make sure that something is projecting because his energy is actually, it projects very, very far. So mm -hmm. what you might want to do is if you were going to do an image, uh, a story based on this uh, photo, you might even copy and resonate that same vibe over in here somehow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what you do is right. you're putting something, maybe some shells or a little bird here or something, right? Maybe it's the dog, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, that way he resonates from here to here. Uh, she, I, I like that she's taller, she's older. Um, what I would probably do is like these boats in the back. I would not put any kid except for her above the boats. That way there is some okay. type of um, way of making her feel older, um, more aware uh, of of. You know, she probably has the job to make sure that nobody, you know, drowns, you know? Right, right. And, and yet she still 
maybe from here down, you put more of like a, a little energy because she's still a little girl, you know? Yeah. But up here, she's very stoic and very wise and very in control and very aware. And so Absolutely, maybe, yes. Maybe from here, you might um, repeat inside that house over here and bring in the verticals that resonate with her. Um, right. This guy, obviously, he, he's the one who's going to jump right in and do something. He's a right. little more of the brainy guy, so maybe he pops into that, that uh, section as well, above. So above is the consciousness, and here is right. the action. And this fella, maybe you bring this boat over so that that creates that nice dominant vertical. And he's, he's actually here. So what you could do is probably bring this house over, let's say, maybe make the clouds end here. So now you're making this a, a vertical alignment. And so you, right. you kind of already begin to feel like what's happening here is over here. And then there's this right. space in between that they exist in, right? So this has nothing to really do with the photo. It's just trying to be a little intuitive and put in um, – into mark structure yes structure that St that structure. communicates the energy and the sublineal exactly concepts. exactly I, I like to call it gesture because you're kind right. of giving the gesture or the energy or the um the silhouette if you will of the of of that piece um and then ultimately you won't see any of these lines because they'll be camouflaged with structure okay now we're going to put a house here okay we need to put a vertical here, so let's go ahead and put a, put, a, put a boat there. Okay? It could be horses. It could be a, a mountain. It could be whatever that you want, but it needs to serve the function of making sure that this vertical thrust is there because it's that vertical thrust that tells us that he is independent. Right. Right. And so that's how you start capturing the, the, this the energy of these, these personalities. Um, right. So, that, I mean, that, we, we went over a lot. I would just say have fun with that, you know. Um, okay. Do you have a timeline on this? Well, I wanted to, uh, this is my project at this moment. This is my project to work on and complete. So, um, so you would not, I just wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. uh, you would not take this little character of the boy, which is my I, pre I prefer mm -hmm. move his sister over closer to him and then just take the boys from the other picture and have them as if the little boy was looking at the brothers. Like you wouldn't just combine okay. the two pictures. I see what you're saying. Uh, so take her. Because, yeah. Uh, let me, let me go here. Shift her over here. Yes. Okay. Like so. Put the little guy here. Yes. I like it. You know why I like it? Yeah. Because that leg, um, this diagonal, which has been bothering me yeah. the whole time, now has a purpose. Because now he he's straight. He has to now, this curve, you want to then follow through, maybe through one of their arms like this. See? The boys are in action. They're going to pick it up. But it all comes back to this, this little boy's thought. He's the thinker. He's the observer. And he's doing it through his brothers. He doesn't have to physically do it. And he's behind his sister. He has this wall here, right? But, but hold on now. Yeah. My thinking is don't use these of the two boys because there's no particular – I don't under – Fair enough. I, I mean – I got gotcha. you. I got okay. you. So let, let's get okay. rid of those boys because you wanted the other other boys in there. I, I think I prefer the other boys. I agree. It's something I agree. that kids do along the shore. They crouch yep. down and look. Yep. So it's, it's really the same thing. Um, let's go ahead and bring back here. Okay. So so let's say here. Okay. Starting to feel right. a little more Norman Rockwell-ish, <laughs> which right. is – Brilliant. Um, okay, so it's the same. It's the same energy, meaning it's just going like that, right? So now you could probably yeah. bring that up like that. Boom. Okay. 
So now when you look at these, you, you look at these guys, and you're like, yeah, they're, they're playing in here. Again, right. she's above the boys, right? So she's right. observing. And so what you can actually do is kind of repeat that, that mothering, observant energy, right? So you have more space right. here. Um, I, and I would actually put more space so you kind of feel like you're at the beach. This kind of almost feels like they're in a creek. Um, right. You know, ha have it a little more open. But again, she's on this this really strong diagonal, uh, yeah. which could probably lean to something up in here. Maybe the sun could be there or something. Boom, boom. That's nice. Um, this would be the shoreline in the back coming through here. Right. And then you have this little guy who, you know, maybe put her dress here on that angle so that it feels like maybe there's a little wind blowing in there, but right. he, he's standing on the other side of that angle. So like with his belt, you might shift his little belly and his belt up on an angle. So his, his shoulders up on an angle so that they kind of uh, align with her and behind her. And then using this curve here to kind of push him into this scene. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, where off the top of your head, mm -hmm. where do you like the little doggy? Because they like the idea of having their dog in the uh, picture. I probably would you just put them um, to the lower right, or personally, I, I would probably put the little dog next to the little boy because they're oh, probably buddies. And then yeah, the reality is these two boys are a little older than him, so he's too young to play with them, and and she's too much of a girl. So they're going to do yeah. their thing. You know, we all know that. That's just. You know. I think that is so brilliant. That is so brilliant. It balances the interaction. Yep. And that's, I mean, I love that. I, and, and I love, and I love the three and then the two. Yes. And so Norman Rockwell said one of his keys to his success was the fact that he was able to make you feel two different emotions at the same time. So here you feel like this little inner circle of, of the brothers. Right you still feel that they're all connected, that they're family, right? Yeah. And, and here you kind of feel like, hey, you know, this, this little guy is connected to the dog, but really these two are the more individuals, right? And, yeah. and it makes sense, you know, she's, she's, a, she's the, the overseer, he's the observer. These are the two more introverted kids, these are the two more extroverted kids, right? right. Um, yeah. So maybe with her, you might construct her with a lot more horizontals, especially in the top, him, maybe more verticals. And then these guys are just active, very, very, right. very diagonal. Right. Cool. Right. Yeah, I love it. I just love it. Now, I, what I'd like to do, Don, is mm -hmm. I'd like to do a, um, a sketch, and then I'll get back to you just to mm -hmm. see if you like it, if there's anything I didn't think about, or you could say, no, I meant to, I meant, you know, I'm just saying, just mm -hmm. just to take it to the next step, because I would like to be more sophisticated in my design, so that I have a stronger image. That there is a more um, something is more genuine in my work um, for the client's sake and for my own development. Yep. Uh, and I thank you so much. You've been sure. so terrific. Now, what I would encourage you to do, um, if you want to learn this, obviously join the academy. Um, yes. And. Um, and what we can do, what we, what we ask people to do is when they, when they join, um, to do a collection, okay, and work on five images. And that way, the reason I ask you to do that is because when we go through energy maps or thrust maps or line strategies or spacing strategies or working on the grids, if you're working on five images, it really forces you to understand the principles that you're doing. Right and you don't get trapped and caught up in making a pretty picture. And so right. um, and then when you're done, you have all these five images that go, go past. So, for example, Michelle, um, one of my students, she, um, she came to me about three months ago, and she's like, I have this show in three months, and I have to do these flag paintings, but I'm just tired of painting flags, you know? And she's like, I want, I want it to be more art, you know? I want it to communicate something uh, rather than just flags. And so... Um, for her, the flag represented patriotism, it represented community, it represented a spirit, a pride. And so we talked, we, we went through the same exact process. 
how do you communicate pride? How do you communicate spirit? How do you communicate patriotism, you know, um, a respect for the army, you know, those kind of things. And, uh, and we figured it out and she executed the painting. She hung them, uh, last, uh, I guess a couple days ago, they had the show actually last night. Um, but before the doors even opened, she already sold paintings. Oh yeah. my gosh, it's so beautiful. Yeah. They're so, they're so beautiful. profound. <laughs> yeah. And, and they're, they're, oh. they're beautiful. I and mean, when people look at it, they, you see the flag, okay, because that was, yeah. you had to have the flag in there. But people are like, man, you know, when I look at this, there's something about it, you know. And they're having a very different conversation than saying, oh, that's a pretty painting of a flag, you know. Totally, totally. And that's, that's the amazing thing that we feel about things we don't we can't quite put our finger on it but we know it's great as opposed to just something you walk by yep. and um that's what that's what we want and, that, so and that's, i will be sure yeah and that's why um i set up the academy the way it is and and because my dream is that like my my purpose my vision is to teach people how to communicate about art how to read it and how to talk to each other about it right um, in doing it, you actually learn how to talk to your clients more about, uh, better about it, and it raises the right. value because it's not just, hey, can you copy this photo of mine? No, it's right. we're actually engineering a consciousness. This is a yes. consciousness. I mean, this is a way of thinking and something that you want to honor your family and and with, right? So, yes. um, so there is the instructional part of it which is the academy, and then there's the meetups. Basically, like what we just did, we do this yeah. every week. And, uh, and so we keep them small, and then when they get to a certain um, size, we multiply it. So last week, we actually had our first multiplication. So now we have three meetups going throughout the week. Um, and in that way, we, we get to keep these um, small groups intimate and personal, and we get, and everybody gets a lot of time. Uh, you get to grow with each other, and then as as it grows, again comes a point. Then when we multiply it again to keep it um, to keep the quality, uh, and so that's that's the second part. And in there, you really learn how to have uh, you learn how to critique. You learn how to see. Also, what's beautiful is when you go back to your studio, you know how to ask questions when you're alone. You know, when right. something's off, you're like, hmm, well, what's my story? Well, what's my line strategy? Is the energy working right? You know, you, you just have the right questions to ask to basically solve any problem that you have. You know? Yes. So. Yes, that's, that's wonderful. And just one more question. Is yes. this an um, internet academy? Uh, yeah. The, like most, most people are like over the internet that we kind of communicate. Yeah, I deal with like people in Australia, California, all around the world, um, Israel. That's great. Um, we have an Italian coming on, someone from Italy coming on soon. Um, so we, I'll, sh I'll share it with um, some other people. I was thinking about that. And one more question. Yes. Well, another time I want to hear, or maybe I can read up on it. How did you, where did you learn this? Because it's not, very few people understand these things to the depth that you do. So where did you learn this? Hmm. I will answer that question for you. Uh, just let me uh, text somebody because um, uh, actually, let's do this. Um, it's a great question. I just have another meeting I have to get to. And I'm, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll do that another day. Yeah. I, I thank you so much. All okay. right. Excellent. All right. Talk God bless. Take yeah, care. Bye bye. bye.